So far, I've covered most of the three style blindfolded method, which includes three cycle edges and three cycle corners. This video will cover everything you need to get going in three style, including parody, finger tricks, corner twists, and edge flips. At first, I tried to include more advanced things, but then I realized the video would take way too long and be way too complicated, so I'm saving that for a separate video. And if you're curious, here's some of the things that video will include. In a scramble like this, after you memorize corners, in this case I use UFR as the buffer, if you get an odd number of letters you have parity and you have to memorize edges in a different way. So this is the order I'm using, memorize corners, memorize edges, solve edges, solve corners. If you memorize corners and have an even number of letters, then there's no parity and you can memorize edges as usual. But for an odd number of corners, you have to memorize edges so that UF and UR get swapped. In this solve when I memorize edges, usually this would be the buffer and I would start a new cycle. But in this case, since there's parity, I need UF and UR in each other's positions. So in this case, the first thing I would memorize is here. And the reason is because this white green belongs over here like this. If I were to continue through memorization, so this goes to X, then O, W, E, A, and then this is actually the buffer now because these two needed to be swapped. I would continue through memorization as usual and get an even number of letters. So there will always be an even number of edge letters no matter what. After doing edges, these two would be swapped, but everything else is solved. After solving every corner target except the last one, you're gonna end up in a situation with these two edges swapped and the buffer with some other corner swapped. From here, you do an algorithm that swaps both of these at once. There are 21 cases and I won't show them all, but they follow a very similar idea to each other. Most of the time, it's some sort of setup to a J perm. So in this case, I have these two edges and these two corners. So I can do U, R, U prime, and now it's a J perm. Then solve the J perm and undo the setup moves. In the description, again, I have the three style learning sheet, this time updated with corner twists and edge flips and parody algs. The parody part will be really useful because some of them are just algs and I won't show them in this video. But for corner twists and edge flips, this video will contain it all. Next is good finger tricks. During corners, your grip should mostly be the same. You want your left middle finger holding the cube, that way you can do D moves and U moves. Your right hand can hold the right side with the middle finger or the ring finger depending on what it needs to do. If you need to do U2, you hold it with your ring finger, and if you have to do D moves, you hold it with the middle finger. And you wanna optimize commutators in a way where you do not have to change grip a lot. Then here are some of the finger tricks you have to be able to do. U2 with your right hand, U in either direction with either left or right hand, right hand U when your thumb is on top, right hand U when your thumb is on the bottom, D moves in either direction with both of your hands, ring and pinky D2 with both of your hands, if you use ring and middle, you'll have to slightly regrip because your index finger has to be here, so that's not as good. For edges, your grip will change around more depending on if you're doing L or R or M or E moves. Make sure you can do M prime and M with either of your ring fingers because you need your middle fingers to hold the cube. Also S or S prime with either hand, E or E prime with either hand. And if you're doing E from home grip, you need a finger here to hold everything together. If you're doing E from a different grip, then just squeeze these so they don't move. And then there's M2, which you can often do like this, which is R prime and then take the M slice and move it all the way to the front. So like this and also be able to do it with left hand. There are other M2s that are more situational, such as pinky ring with either of your hands. And again, you need your middle fingers here to hold the cube so you can do U moves, so you don't wanna be doing ring middle. And if one of your hands is gripped up, I think the best way from here is often M prime, and then move this down at the same time to catch this for another M prime. So that would look like this. And then right hand as well. And then there's U2 and E2 with either of your hands. Besides that, you need the same finger tricks from corners, like U moves and D moves. As you optimize commutators, you wanna think about two important things. One is making regrips soft regrips. So a soft regrip is just a regrip that happens during other moves, so it doesn't take up time. For this commutator, we have a U R2 prime, and that's not a good grip. So instead I do U with this hand while regripping. So this alg isn't made any slower from the regrips because they're done during moves. And then the regrip at the end here is done during the U prime. You also wanna focus on not overworking fingers. In this commutator, we start with S, and this is often the best way to do S, but then we have an F move coming two moves later. This is a finger overwork because you're doing these two very quickly with the same finger, and you have to take time to reset it. So there's no other way to do that F, but you can do the S like this instead, and this makes it faster. So the first three moves, instead of being like this, would be like this. Overworking doesn't seem that important at first, but here's what the difference looks like. Here's a super overworked version and this is without overworks. Next, we'll look at basic corner twists. 
So first is how to solve a corner twist when there is no parity. We'll start by looking at cases with only one twist that isn't the buffer. So during memorization, it would look like this because you wouldn't see what the buffer is like and it'll only look like one corner twist. For a two twist in the U layer, we'll twist these one by one by putting them at UFR and doing a twist alg. We start with the one that has white facing forward. So this one would be white facing side if it was here. So we start with this one and do this. And then move the other one here and do the reverse. and put it back. And for a case like this, you can move this one over with white on front, do the first thing, move the other one over and reverse it. For a D layer twist plus the buffer, what you do is you look at the side that isn't yellow and this one needs to go to the side that is yellow. So if we could pick two targets, we would say this one goes here, but that's not possible with three style. So instead in the middle, we add this one twice. So we just do two three style commutators for this. So first this one to here, and then this one to here. Next is how to solve a corner twist when there is parity. So instead of doing the parity target followed by a twist alg, what you do is the parity target and another one from here as a commutator. Right now we have K as the parity target, we just add more targets at the end. So if you have a U layer piece, that's gonna be the top of it followed by the side that is not white. And for parity plus D twist, you add the side that isn't yellow followed by the side that is yellow. For example, this case, I would do KD followed by I parity. So KD and then parity for I. If you had more corner twists, you can just keep adding those. So for example, here I could go to V and then this twist, which is going to add D followed by I, because white and then non-white. And then for the bottom one, I would add G, L. You might be wondering, why don't you just do parity normally and do the twist alloc at the end versus what I'm doing here, which is a commutator followed by parity. The difference between these two is a commutator versus a twist alloc. And I would say in general, twist algs take at least 1.5 times as long as most commutators. So even though it takes more thinking to get used to this at first, you'll ultimately want to use a method that has a faster combination of algs. Next is how to do edge flips. There are a lot of cases, but they're pretty intuitive and break down into only a few categories. For any E piece, and of course the buffer, what you do is two commutators. This is similar to corners where this one needs to go here, and we're just going to add this one twice. So PD would look like this, and then DJ would look like this. And if the flip was on the left side, you would use this as the helper instead. For RD or LD, what you do is the commutator going from this side up to the top here. But we do something different right before the last move. So we do this. And now the last move should be U. Instead, you add this commutator right here. And then do U. For the rest of the flips, you have to know how to solve this one, and we'll use variants of this to solve any other flip. So the algorithm goes like this. So that's just two commutators, but they don't use UF as the buffer, so you may be unfamiliar with them. Once you can do that one, we'll use the same thing for this one. So make sure you set up with a U prime to get them like this, and then do the same thing, but the last move is gone. So that would look like this. And then instead of ending with U prime, there's just no last move. You can also think of that as we started with the U prime, then went to the beginning and went all the way through. And that's called a cyclic shift, and we'll use that idea for the rest of the cases. For UR, you start the algorithm at the R prime FR. Then go to the beginning, and we're done. For UL, same thing, but mirror the algorithm. For DF or DB, it's almost a cyclic shift. What you do is you do U2 to put this edge at the back. And then for DF, what you're gonna do is M prime U2 M to set them up like this. Now you solve this case the same, but you end it early. And then here, how I remember it is the one that needed to flip here is now on the right. So I'm just gonna move it back to the front. Next is DB and how this works is again, put this one at the back and then set them up with M. Then we solve this case the same as usual. And then here we end at the M prime. 
This video should have covered all the cases on how to twist and flip one corner or one edge outside the buffer, but if you're ever not sure, you can check the three style learning sheets in the description. This is the simplest way you can approach flips and twists, but it is not the optimal way to do it. In my next video about three style, I'll cover how to do these faster, as well as some other more advanced tricks. But even with that being said, everything you've learned from this video will be useful in some way later on as well, even though it's not necessarily the optimal thing to do. That's because a lot of the future concepts are really similar to what I've shown today. So if you know these, learning those will be a breeze. So that's it for today. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.